Hey, it's Chris. What are we talking about today? Level 99's latest Exceed version. We're going Guilty Gear Strive. Familiar? Not familiar? Let's talk. Everything you need to know with some hands-on. Let's go. So are you familiar with Exceed? If you're not familiar with Exceed or Level 99 games, they put out amazing head-to-head -head asymmetric fighting style games, just like the original Guilty Gear. If you're not familiar with this 1998 property, has been around in 25 iterations since then, the latest is actually the video game Strive. And so this is porting that and those characters to your tabletop in the Exceed manner. So what we've got going on here in front of you is the basic setup. Now I've got both characters facing me for convenience sake, but normally one character on this side, one character on this side, set up in the middle on their starting areas and going head to head. We have Soul Bad Guy, can't make this up, and then you have Kai Kiske. So that is the two characters. Now they say, and have a little description on all of the characters to tell you what they do. Soul Bad Guy, the Ruthless Striker, Kai, Almighty All-Rounder. So they give you a little description in all of the Exceed games because of the asymmetry and because of people's preferences of being a close range striker, an all-around, a ranged person, however you like to do things. And so these are the examples that they've given us here. And so what we've got going on in Exceed, if you're not familiar, is you play to knock out your opponent along this two-dimensional path. Now the difference in this game though, apart from some of the others, is that you can actually pass each other on the map itself, which will allow you to mitigate or change what's happening dynamically, even allowing you to get missed from your opponent's attacks. So this is a card-driven playing style game. And what I mean by that is you have a deck of cards here that you are going to be drawing from on a turn-by-turn -turn basis that is also an endgame scoring condition as well because if you have to shuffle your deck a second time, you lose. If you get down to zero health points, you lose. Everything else in between is fair game. So what you're going to be doing on this game is you're going to be drawing up your starting hand at the beginning. And if you are the first player, you drop five cards. If you are the second player, you're drawing up six cards. And so what you're going to be doing is you're going to be looking at your cards and trying to decide on a turn by turn basis what one action you're potentially going to be taking with the hand that is provided to you. And depending on which action you choose, or should I say which action you do not choose, it's going to also allow you to replenish your life's breath of your hand in the first place. And so as you pick these cards out, you're going to notice that there are many different attributes on them in the first place. You have along the left hand side here, all of the attributes of the cards in the general sense. You have your range, you have the power of the attack, you have the speed of the attack. And if you cycle through, you'll also notice a guard ability. And then some of these will actually have a pink one on the left side here as well, too, that represents armor. All of those have a different effect on timing and the dynamics of the battling in the first place. Range obviously goes with how far you are away from your opponent, and that doesn't matter which side you are on. Power represents the damage that you are going to do to your opponent. The higher the power, the more the damage. The armor mitigates that damage, so it's going to get subtracted. Six power, two armor, it's going to do four damage. Now, the guard, though, is something slightly different. As you can see here, the guard is five on this card of Stun Edge for Kai's card. And what that means is that if the attack does less than that, it does not stun you. Because if you are the first person to hit, and that's where speed comes in, the higher the speed, that person goes first. It doesn't matter who declares the attack. And that's the risk and reward with Exceed. That is the not perfect information side of things that goes along with this game. Because as you're attacking, you are choosing, or defending, you are choosing a card and laying it face down in front of you in order to go head to head. And until those cards get flipped up, you don't quite know what your opponent has chosen and how things are going to play out. And then, and therein lies the dynamic and the main crux of this game. Speed kills, essentially, right? But guard saves, more so than armor. Because you can see here, power three, no armor, and this has a speed of five, this has a speed of six. Cross is going to go first in a range one to two, one, two, cross is in range, it's gonna deal three damage to soul. One, two, three. But, because soul has a guard of three, it does not stun him. Because otherwise, if the guard had not been there, 
soul gets stunned and this card is just worthless this card is tossed out because they chose wisely with this card they're going to get a turn to act but before they can act all of the text at the bottom of the card is also going to activate depending on what keywords are there now in this case cross actually has an after effect which means after effect i retreat three so in this case one two three is actually going to put me then outside of the range of the volcanic viper here which only has a range of one to two so although soul didn't get stunned the attack is also going to be negated because i'm outside the range of this melee brawling striker and so this card is actually going to go straight to the discard pile instead now with this game though when you do hits the cards that you take actually get placed in your gauge area this gauge area is sort of like a force to be utilized later and so it's not thrown in your discard pile to be reshuffled in but it's be able to be used as a power to empower your other abilities mainly your critical attacks and if i pull one of these out here you'll see in a second what those look like and those are indicated by red cards and so in this case we have sacred edge and so sacred edge here is a card that costs four and what that means is i have to spend four force in order to play it unlike all of the other main attacks which just have symbols in the upper corner you can see that again, ride the lightning is another four cost. And so that's what you're gonna be having to do. Now you can pay this from the gauge and discard it, or you'd be having to be discarding from your hand. Well, if you discard from your hand, well, your ability to mitigate things and play cards in the first place are gonna be severely limited. So you can see why building up this becomes very important. Now, the other aspect and the other dynamic of this game, which makes it so exciting is these cards are multi-use. As you can see also along the bottom of these cards, they also have a boost effect there is either orange which means it's continuous so you play it and it goes into your boost area and it stays there until a next battle and that's another tricky uh, strategic point of this game in the first place or they are pink and they have an uh, immediate boost that you get so discard someone else's continuous boost card so if i just played this card i would discard it but it would cause one of the other continuous boosts that was out here in this area to be discarded and go to the discard pile to mitigate things because these boosts as you can find out allow you to uh well change the dynamic of the game in the first place in this case my ex attacks this is a great time to talk about ex attacks all get plus one power speed armor and guard so i mean all of those things i just mentioned are going to get a boost now what are ex attacks well ex attacks are a special kind of attack where if you have two of the same card in your hand so if we can find two cards here for example if we find two sweeps if i decide either as attacking or defending that i want to play both of these together all of them get placed face down and then they subsequently all get plus one to every single one across the board here and that's why it becomes important and that's why that card gets an extra plus one all of a sudden my range of one to three becomes like what three to five that's a massive massive well boost and so you can see how that becomes more important things like this where the hit now is all of a sudden the opponent discards a random card become all that much more drastic and you can see how this game goes very quickly then even with only attacks of well ranging from two to six in some of these decks sometimes even less so what else do you need to know about this game? Well, the new mechanic, the highlight mechanic, because all of these Exceed seasons have slightly different variations of what their abilities offer. The ability that they're offering here at the bottom of these cards is this little cancellation time symbol. And what that does is that allows you to take one of your gauges and play it when one of these cards is played to then get an extra action. And that doesn't seem like a lot, but in this game, it is built on momentum. And so you only get, like I mentioned at the beginning, one action per turn and then it goes to the next person. There is a way to mitigate that. There are keywords called advantage, where if you play a card and the advantage gets activated, it comes back to you even if it was your turn already. But this is a much cleaner, quicker, more controllable way, because as you saw right there, Soul's attack might have had the advantage, but it might have even hit, but they went first and they moved out of range, so hmm, too bad, so sad. Now I can get that extra action without having to necessarily have a way to mitigate things in my favor, I can just do it. And so that's the great thing about this game. This is a game that favors the heavy tactician and it's lovely for doing so. This is absolutely one of my favorite head-to-head -head asymmetric duelers. I dare say, my favorite second to only maybe summoner wars which is a team-based faction game not a you know individual fighter based game 
from the individual fighters, I don't think there's one better than this. So this is just a demo deck to show you what two of the characters are going to have slight variances of. But typically with these seasons, they'll have anywhere upwards of a dozen or more different characters with asymmetry of across the board craziness to illustrate what can be done just with this simple back and forth and dual use cards. And the creativity and the balance that goes into these games is second to none. And so if you haven't played one of these games and you're interested, you should definitely give this a look-see. Um, the big question mark is going to be, again, what's the price point and what does it look like? Because a couple of the past seasons have had acrylic standees instead of just placing your cards on the board itself. And again, I guess I didn't really go into any of the details where you actually, if you look at these cards in the first place, your character cards have a number on the lower right hand corner, which is their exceed ability, which is where the name of the game comes from is you flip them over and all of a sudden they get crazy abilities. And when I exceed, I just strike. And if I strike, I can cancel this turn for free and get plus two power. And then you utilize it, it goes and it flips back over, just like Kai's does as well here. The first time you cancel each turn, draw one, and then you may advance or retreat one. So they give you these game-breaking powers at a cost. A cost you can afford, though, at the same time. And how and when you choose to do it just makes this game uh, just fantastic. Again, I cannot say enough good things about this game. All of the decks and the characters come with their own listings of what's in the deck, so yet you can hand it to your opponent so they have a little bit of a sense to make a little bit more fair as opposed to just hope that, you know, I can figure out what they're doing by the end. Well, you have sort of a listing of kind of what it is and what it does, and it gives you a little bit of sense of control. Not enough to make it uh, perfect information, more like a BattleCon-esque, but enough to wet your appetite if you're looking for that but not enough to overstay its welcome if you're looking for more of a tactical based game as opposed to pure strategy a couple other side notes a little caveats with the rules um if you can't play a card or if you're unable to play a card or pay for a card um there is a condition where you have a wild strike where when you're laying those cards face down when your opponent plays one you just draw from the top of the deck and play it that way you also have a few other things that you can do, including the discard pile when you run out or when you just choose to take your discard pile and want to shuffle it back in, you can choose to do so as your action. But like I mentioned, if you ever have to shuffle a second time, it's game over. The various types of movements are outlined in the rules about how you can advance, retreat, uh, push, pull your opponent, and how those sometimes allow you to just get next to and sometimes overlap with. Again, it's all there. It's straightforward. The rules could use a little bit of errata because there's a few edge cases that you'll run into with some of those things of when does this kind of and how does this terminology but once you get the swing of things it's relatively straightforward and all the characters uh, fly by the same semi set of rules while they're not being broken by the cards in the first place so all in all i mean i love this game i like the new edition of the map i'm not sure if this is completely new or if it's just the first time i've seen it with the boost and the gauge side of things as well, because otherwise it's kind of been like keeping track on just a table without it. And so that's kind of nice. The one thing I'll say though, as you can see, this is just like a, a folded out version. I would love a neoprene mat. And so with the other previous seasons, they've done that in addition to like the acrylic standees. And so the acrylic standees, as much as I'm team standee, I could easily pass on, but a nice play mat, if you're really gonna do this with any frequency to keep track of things, is just incredibly nice in this game and uh, would really be worth it as well. So just from practical experience. And in case you were wondering, uh, these are nice little coins here that each say heaven and hell on both sides to keep track of the health marker. So that's Guilty Gear, that's Exceed, that's the new one coming out soon. Uh, more information from Level 99 Games, hopefully in the near future. We'll see what they got in store. All in all, again, I think there was a concern with the advancing progression of some of the other previous iterations of Street Fighter and Seventh Cross and their own world blend of things and the Night Under Siege one, but this most recent one, like you worry about power creep in this game. And so it's nice to see it just scaled back just a little bit of this nature and so that it's not just all over the place, but still the awesomeness and the combination of things that they can do even with new stuff without, you know, making it more complex. Is really nice you know they're not necessarily going this way with the complexity but they're going this way which is what you want to see in a game like this to make it long standing and have a long shelf life in the first place so all in all i love this game and this is no exception can't wait to see what guilty gear has got in store for us so there you go everything you need to know guilty gear exceed all in one place thanks for watching stay classy have a great freaking day